Okay, grade 12. So what we have here is a typical scenario uh, that you might be getting in your theory paper. So they're going to give you a list of specs of a PC, right? Give you the scenario to say, well, you know what? John is looking to buy a PC for his mother. Um, she's going to be using it at home. Is this going to suit what she needs? Okay. Then they're going to go into some more detail and then they're going to ask you questions based on this. So let me ask the first question. What is this? Does this refer to a laptop or a desktop machine? And then you need to answer why. Okay. So when we look at this, right, what we're going to be looking at are some of the items here that's going to indicate to us whether this is a desktop or laptop. Let's see if you can figure that out. Okay, have you figured it out yet? There are certain items that are listed here that immediately tell us whether this is referring to a desktop or a laptop. So when I look at this, it says to me that it's a 17 inch screen. Now, is there a 17 inch screen on a desktop and a laptop? Yes, there is. Okay, uh, the difference is remember, a desktop machine is gonna have a separate monitor, right, our screen, and the laptop will have it built in. Okay, can they both have a one terabyte hard drive? Of course, yes. Windows 10, that's our operating system. Yes, it can. DVD drive, yes. But this is where the difference comes in. What does that PSU stand for, by the way? That PSU stands for Power Supply Unit. Okay, now, the minute we start talking about a power supply, we are talking about a unit on its own that's usually just in our desktops. Remember the laptops, what do they use? They use a battery. So this is one of the factors that immediately is gonna tell us that we're dealing with a desktop machine. An ATX case, this is the tower unit. Again, this is gonna tell us that it is a desktop. So this is one factor, this is another one, and these two are as per normal as you would find. Now, here's another one. What about the wireless keyboard and mouse? Can you have a wireless keyboard and mouse with a desktop? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, definitely. Can you have a wireless keyboard with a laptop? Yes, you can. A lot of people go for the wireless mouse because they just hate those built-in devices. Oh, terrible idea. Okay, so don't worry too much about that. These are the main two, your power supply unit and your ATX case that is gonna tell you that this indeed is a desktop machine. Okay, so as we go along, what else do we see? What other questions could they ask us? Now, already they've asked us whether this is a desktop or a laptop, right? So we know that. What about the wireless keyboard and mouse? Here they can ask you what the advantages and disadvantages of having a wireless keyboard and mouse are. Now remember, simple things like um, advantages, there's less clutter, there's no wires, it can be moved around. What are the disadvantages? Remember things like it works on batteries, it can be stolen, all those type of things. So these are just some of the things that you need to remember. With a screen, they can ask us about the resolution. Right? They can ask us about the size. How is um, the size of a screen measured? Remember, it is diagonally in inches. Okay? The hard drive, they can ask us questions on this as well because you have a traditional hard drive and then you have your SSD, which is your solid state drive. Now remember, I, at least I hope you remember, okay? The difference between these two is on a traditional hard drive, and I'll probably have a picture here to show you this, on a traditional hard drive, what do you have? You have disks that are spinning inside. With an SSD drive, like this one, there are no moving parts. So between the two, let me actually pop this away. Between these two, the hard drive, normal traditional hard drive, is the one that is going to be cheaper, okay? Your SSD is gonna work faster than your hard drive, the traditional one. It's going to be smaller, but it's going to be more expensive. You know how things are, the more convenient something is, the more expensive it usually becomes. So you need to look at those factors because that's what they're going to check with you about over here. Then they'll also ask you, what is the operating system? 
Okay? Now, if they mention anything here about what's called a home edition, and they say that, man, John bought this PC and he tried to use it, and he wanted to change the background or the screensaver, but he couldn't do it or he couldn't find the option. And that's usually because he has a home edition. Now, the difference between a home edition and a pro edition is the fact that on a home edition, you have the absolute basics from the operating system that's needed to run the machine. So a home edition doesn't include things like changing the background, screen saving, none of these things. But your pro edition has all those features. So with a the home, there's just less features. Okay, we've got our power supply unit that we chatted about. The DVD drive, they will ask you, they won't ask you, is there a DVD drive? No. What are they going to say to you? Are there any optical drives associated with this PC? Unnecessary big words. Okay, but what is an optical drive? When you think of optics, what do you think of? The optometrist. You think of eyes. So an optical drive is any drive that has some sort of an eye, some sort of a laser that reads information off of some sort of media. A DVD drive, what does it do? A CD-ROM, what does it do? It has a laser inside that reads off of a disc. Okay? That's why it's called an optical drive. Now, most laptops don't have these. Why? Because they've opted for USB. Simpler, faster, better. All right. Then the last one. This is the one where there's quite a number of marks associated with it. So, when you look at these two, there's a couple of questions that can immediately come up. Number one, what is the speed of the CPU? And what is it measured in? So, the speed is 3.4 gigahertz, and it's measured in gigahertz. Now they'll ask you, what is the make or the manufacturer of the CPU? The manufacturer is Intel. What is the model of that particular CPU? It is a Core i7 or whatever is going to be there. With the memory, they'll ask you, what type of RAM is this? Okay, you will indicate this is normal memory. It is volatile. What does that mean? It means that when you switch the PC off, Everything in that memory is erased. So it's, it changes. What's the size of that memory? 16 gigs. What is the speed or model of that memory? And it's a DDR3. What does that refer to? It refers to the speed of the memory. So as you can see, grade 12s, there is a lot of information, a lot of questions that can be asked just from these specs. My advice would be, um, Check through the papers, check online, find adverts, go through all of those things and see if you fully understand what they're telling you. I know many of you go to the shops, you go have a look at all these PCs and most of the time when you read this, you have no clue what is being said. Okay, so it is essential that you understand this because there are going to be a lot of questions um, and a lot of marks coming from something as simple as this. Okay, grade 12, so what you need to remember now and what I'm actually going to throw up on the side here is an example of what you just saw. So remember, go through the list that you're going to see on this side. Right? Have a look at the specs. See what each one of them um, is actually indicating to you because you'll get questions based on all of these things. So whether they're asking you about the hard drive, the operating system, um, whatever it might be, all that information is going to be contained um, in the little picture or like what I'm showing you here, um, they'll have all of that in there and their questions will be based on that. So just read.